Good morning, internet people. Welcome or welcome back to Sustainable Sierra to YouTube. If this is your first time visiting me here, hi, welcome. My name is Sierra and I'm an American who lives in England. Every week I make a video about my family's life here or whatever it is we are up to on the weekly. Today I actually have my family here with me. Hi, mister. And we have a little man. Hi. And today is a very exciting day because our family is actually on our summer holiday, which contrary to popular belief in our outfits, it is actually the first week of August, but it is about 60 degrees Fahrenheit out there. So it is really cold because England summer and it's been raining the last couple of days. But anyway, we got in to Penrith last night, which is in the Lake District, which is in Cumbria. So Northwest where we live in Yorkshire. Um, but we're gonna be spending up here for maybe, it's gonna be about a week. Throughout the trip, we're gonna go to some castles, cafes and things like that. We're gonna film not every day, but a little bit every day. Today's video is going to be um, kind of what's going on around Penrith. I don't know if I'll be filming this video in two parts or not, but anyway, we're gonna be starting at Brogham Castle or how do you wanna say it, mister? I said Broham. Broham, Brogham Castle? I don't know. You guys can tell me in the comment section if I slaughter it, but I'll ask at the visitor center and tell you um, how you're supposed to say Bra it. Probably Braham. Brogham? I don't know. Braham. Brogham? Braham. Brogham? I don't know. Anyways, I digress. So, Braham Castle is another one of the many English heritage sites that our family likes to visit when we're on holiday or just traveling around because the membership is free. Once you pay, you can visit the sites as much as you want, which is really fun. A um, little bit about Brogham Castle. Literally, it's coming directly from the English Heritage Guide is that it was built in the 13th century, like a lot of the castles and things around here, um, by the, by Robert de Vinpont, Vupont, I think. And then it has been bought and resold various times. Um, King James I was here and... Clifford family also owned it for a time. The Clifford family is a family that owned a lot of houses in this area at a certain point. And it's a really interesting place. You guys can see maybe a little bit in the background, maybe not. I'll show it to you guys in a second um, as we're walking up. But one thing you'll notice immediately that is unique about this property or a lot of the properties in the area is that it's built with red sandstone. In the 13th century, the builders were not trucking things around. They were typically using things that were available in the area. And so that is what's available here. So um, I think the raining has kind of stopped now. So we're going to get out of the car and we're going to check it out. Oh, and look, there's a little river. Ooh, wow, that's a river. So excited. Wow. There it is. Hey again, so I'm coming out of the entrance and gift shop. I don't remember how much it is, um, but well, because we have the heritage membership, it's free. Um, but oh no, the rain is coming back a little. Anyways, I'm heading in to the castle now. It's behind me. The boys have already left me. It's there. But I thought I would just tell you a little bit more about the castle as I walk up to it. Um, so I talked to the lady working in the gift shop and she, usually they know everything about the castle and of course she did as well and so she was to tell me some more things. Um, so this castle originally was a Roman site, which I did say in the book but I forgot to mention, but it's a Roman site and it's actually pronounced Broom Castle. Why? Nobody knows. They just decided for fun to like change it. But anyways, um, a little bit more about this site significant is that the stone that's actually in the castle was repurposed from the original Roman site that was here which I think is really interesting um, that happened a lot a lot of times you can look at different properties and notice the stones don't match because they were scavenged from other places or I guess pillage is the right word but anyway other thing that was interesting is back in the day the Scotland England border actually was this river right here which is really cool so I think that side over there was Scotland now it's England Clifford and um, Carlisle and Penrith were Scotland but now they're England and then this side was England and so this castle was meant to defend England from being invaded by the Scots and now we're all friends and we all like each other so that makes the site just a little bit more interesting and yeah that's it I'm gonna show you guys the castle and catch up with my son because he has left us he is on a mission to see that castle before the rain comes so I could be wrong but that right there is medieval Scotland right there that used to be Scotland so Uncle Scott your people is used to own that place <laughs> What? <laughs> You're in jail! Is the daddy in jail? Light. You need a light, okay. Ah! You found the 
toilet? Yep. Oh, let's go see. Does anybody have to go potty? Hey. Do not go potty in here, for the record, peoples. Oh boy, it definitely, definitely smells like a toilet. Then, while you're sitting here doing your business, this is the view that you can have of the castle and all the intruders and stuff. Oh no, they've locked me in! Yes! I can't get out! You guys really did lock me in here! Rude! Mean! Mean! Yeah, you can see the different doorways um, and then you have to just imagine there were like different floors that have been burned and they there's windows there also you can see oh they're already going up you don't want to investigate this little room over here hmm. don't know what this was used for mind your head what's the matter what you in for being too handsome what did I do? Is it because I didn't pack any biscuits? Well, because you're sneaking. you can go all the way up to the top and see the view. There's circle stairs, great. Come on, come on, come on please. I'm be quiet. I don't really want to. Okay. Okay, so like not only are the steps really uneven and tiny, but they wind and they're, they're bad. I am about halfway up the castle. As you guys know, I'm afraid of winding staircases and so it takes me a long time to climb them because they freak me out. Anyways, I was taking a little break while I was waiting for like my breathing to slow down and I noticed this plaque here and it says that there's actually a tombstone that was repurposed from the Roman site and used as a ceiling slash floor tile here, which is really interesting. Um, it's really hard to read, but these are the really kinds of cool things that you can see in England. There's not very much inscription left, but you can see the inscription right there in it which is really neat. As far as what they did with the bodies that were buried here when they took the tombstone, no idea, but the tombstone lives on, which is quite interesting. And so that's why I really love these English heritage sites and just all these historic sites in England. I feel like there's just so much to discover and see. And if this plaque wasn't here, you wouldn't even notice that this is here. So, super cool. Look. Look. What is there to see? It's beautiful. It's beautiful? Oh wow, it is beautiful. Hello! Over there! Oh my goodness! Look! That's historic Scotland over there! So beautiful! Y'all want to see some skeletons? What? They're bug exoskeletons, bud. See? Right there? What do you think? Is he going to die? They're already dead. There's something else I want to show you. Um, we're standing in what I feel like it might have been a chapel at some point, um, based on the acoustics in here, but um, we were just walking around here and you can see there's like a little like font thing that theoretically could have been used for holy water. But you can also see along here how there's like um, different inscriptions. This one you can't really read, but one over there has dates and stuff on it. And then like right here along the wall, you can still see some of the saints or something. I don't know what it was, but it's like an old statue in the wall, which is really neat. And there's another one right there. All right, let's see a castle race, boys. Ready, go. <laughs> Woo! 
Here they come. Good morning. Got the fam here again today. Um, it's what, like four days later after I filmed my first Penrith video, or the first part of this video. It's actually our last day in the Lake District today and I decided to stay close to where we're staying just because we're all real tired. Um, but we have a couple of places nearby we're gonna see today. Um, the first one is the one we're at right now, which is King Arthur's Round Table. This area is in Neolithic Henge. It's about 4,000 years old. And it looks like this. I don't know if you guys can see. Apparently the view is better from above, but um, they also believe that this was once King Arthur's jousting ring based on the shape of it and the stories. So it's pretty fun and pretty cool. Um, this is a free place to visit. It's just hanging out here, but it is within the English heritage bubble. So yeah, if you want to see it, it's here. You gonna show us the book? They're off to see King Arthur. That's it. I mean, that's all of it. It's not a big place. going up to Mayburn Henge which is just a big old rock but we're right next to it so we're gonna go see a rock this my friends is a rock it's four to five thousand years old it's Neolithic and it's just sitting here where you can see it don't vandalize it but you can even touch it history. There's also some rabbit poop down here. <laughs> Welcome to Penrith Castle. Uh, Penrith Castle is probably going to be our last stop as far as historic things on this trip. Are you excited? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. So quick history of Penrith Castle. We're going to walk up and we're talk about it. Uh, actually, I'm going to just read the information on here. So the um, Penrith Castle is in the middle of Penrith. It's actually really close to Morrison's, which um, we parked at Morrison's to come here because we figured we'd only be here for a little while. And they have a two hour parking limit, so we're gonna be here for an hour and then shop for a few minutes. Um, but Penrith Castle is, as I said, right behind me. And it was originally built by Ralph Neville in 1396. And he was the manor of Penrith. And he built this castle. He was kind. Of, he was very important at the time when it came to like the Scotland border protection. But this castle was more so just like his like hangout and place that he like did his like you know noble dude things. And then 80 years later, it was given to Richard, the Duke of Gloucester, who current who became King Richard III. So I don't know how long Richard III lived here. I'm sure you could look it up if you wanted to. But yeah, there it is. So let's go check it out and see what's left. 